what we got here is the rectifier and uh, if we just turn it over for the moment you can see um, that on one side it's got an aluminium face and um, then we've got four, five, six, seven terminals showing. This um, uh, aluminium face uh, is live um, when, the, um, when it's connected up so you need to be careful um, if you are taking off the front cover of your um, motor, your alternator cover, then I would strongly recommend that you disconnect the battery first. But if you make a short by removing the cover as you as you detach it, you may well blow some of the diodes. Um, this aluminium behaves as a heat sink uh, to take excess heat away uh, from the diodes as the uh, uh, alternator is charging. And there are actually 11 diodes on these circuit boards. Uh, we're mainly concerned with uh, the six um, phase diodes um, which uh, actually rectify the current from the alternator which is in alternating current and changes that to direct current. You can't charge a battery using alternating current, it just will not work. Batteries need DC feed. Um, so this is what the rectifier does. Now it's my plan to do sometime um, probably in the autumn to do a uh, charging systems video. So this is just a rough check uh, and, a rough, and a quick check that you can do to establish whether or not um, the rectifier is functioning as it should. On the uh, other side there's a printed circuit board and uh, you can see if you look carefully that the printed circuit board is set up in such a way that the um, diodes are connected. The diodes are physically connected to the aluminium here and uh, the, um, if you look down the side you can see that the diode is um, soldered to the printed circuit board so they are when my thumbs tapping you can see where one of the diode terminals comes through and touches the printed circuit board as are these phase terminals here each terminal is connected to one part of the printed circuit board and they are bridged by the printed circuit board across to each diode so we've got a connection onto a bit of printed circuit underneath here and on here and on here those three connections are linked together as are those three connections and as are um, the three connections on this one this one and this one okay so if you look across the other side you can probably see that but if you get a better idea you can see your own so um well the diodes are um a device which behave as an electrical one-way valve so they will only conduct current in um, one direction or they should only conduct current in one direction to operate correctly so what you're going to need is an ohm meter and so here I've got a cheap multimeter here this is one I take with me when I go off traveling and uh, the ohm scale is signified by the Greek letter omega, which looks like that horseshoe in the top left-hand corner. So where we've got 200, 2000, 20k, 200k and 20m, that's all the ohm scale. And uh, for the scale, the most suitable scale that we require on this particular meter is a 0 to 2000 ohm scale. Conduct this test. Um, what I'm going to need to do is first of all put a crocodile clip onto the aluminium heatsink, then with the other probe, I'm going to um, test each connection in turn. So, first one will be on here, okay. And you can see we're getting a reading okay make sure you press the probe through the paint okay there's the next one in the center so about just over 500 ohms each time and then this one again 
we're um, got the same similar sort of reading. Okay, so then I'm going to swap out the connections. So I'll swap the connections around and conduct the same test again. This time you can see there's what there's a one showing there and that indicates open circuit, that means infinity. Okay, and again across the next pair. Same reading and again on the next one the same reading. So that indicates that that uh, rectifier is quite okay. So I've got another um, rectifier here and I'm going to conduct the same series of tests again. So if I start off with this one, you can see we've got open circuit. This one you can see we've got open circuit and this one shows a very low resistance so it indicates to me that there's something wrong there so now we'll swap the um, terminals around again Testing this one and it shows the resistance which shows it's conducting that way. Test this one, shows the resistance so, it's sh so that it shows it's conducting one way. And this one again shows a very low resistance which indicates that we've got a fault on this particular rectifier. So there you go, that's just a quick test to show um, uh, a test on how to test diodes on a circuit board. Now, I don't know which diode has gone faulty on this, but there's definitely a faulty diode and um, somewhere in the system. I don't think it's any of the main diodes, I think it's one of the small diodes that's perhaps gone faulty, but uh, I can only find that out by taking the diode off. I have seen if you because these di uh, rectifiers are quite expensive uh, and I have actually um, discovered one that had been repaired um, on a bike I was working on one time somebody had actually soldered in a new diode because the diodes are quite cheap um, the diode that was soldered in was actually mounted so that it was sitting proud of the top of this circuit board here. It was one of these diodes, I can't remember which one, but it was one of the diodes that had failed originally and somebody had gone to somewhere like Maplin's and, um, and bought a diode. Uh, and it, it will work, the diodes are very cheap to buy that way and fit, but because it's not mounted on a heatsink, it does make it prone to overheating. But if, you've, uh, if you want to, if money's tight, uh, and you want to get by it then you can solder in a new diode provided you get one of the right value. Well I hope that helps um, and um, I'll try and load this up now.